Hi, Fred Cook, president of the Schaefer Marine. We at Schaefer take great pride in producing the strongest, most durable furling systems on the market. We've been producing our offshore systems for over 30 years now. Over the years, we have learned a great deal from our own sailing experiences, as well as from all the input and feedback from you, our customers. Based on this input, we often make small changes to improve the performance and durability of our products. While continuous improvement is important, we also always keep in mind that the new and improved part should, whenever possible, be retrofitable to the old systems. This practice helps assure that you will always have a continuous and reliable source of parts into the future. While the concept of assuring availability of parts for 25-year-old products may be a bit out of fashion in today's disposable world, we believe that our customers both expect and appreciate this commitment to servicing the equipment they buy from Schaefer Marine. One example of this is the drum bearing pack on our 1100, 2100, and 3100 furling systems. The bow of any sailboat sailed in salt water is one of the toughest environments for marine equipment. The furler is subjected to constant salt spray combined with sand, dirt, and grit draining down on the drum from the head stay and furler extrusions. While regular inspection and diligent flushing with fresh water is a deterrent, we recognize that often this doesn't get done on a regular basis. Many boats actually suffer more from a lack of use than abuse at sea, and as a result, over time, grit and corrosion takes a toll on the bearing pack. Eventually, you may notice that the furler has developed some friction and does not turn as freely as when it was new. In worst cases, the drum is very difficult to turn or is frozen completely. While it is possible to remove the old assembly and disassemble the bearing pack and correct the situation, you may find that it is much easier and more efficient to replace the bearing pack with a newer version. The new bearing has been redesigned with new bearing races to reduce the chance of corrosion, as well as large flushing holes to make maintenance convenient and more effective. The new bearing can be directly replaced on older systems as well. Today we would like to walk you through the steps required to replace the old bearing and offer a few helpful hints to make the process more efficient. New bearing packs are available directly from Schaefer Marine. Just call or email our customer service department and we will arrange to get you the correct parts that you need. Once the parts are on order, we suggest that you prepare the old bearing pack for disassembly by spraying all the fasteners with a penetrating oil like lubricant like WD-40 or blaster. You will also need to collect the following tools and supplies. A set of long-handled SAE Allen wrenches, a medium Phillips screwdriver, and an assortment of standard and needle nose pliers for removing cotter and clevis pins. It would be good to have a bucket or a tray for small parts and an assortment of new cotter pins to replace the old, as well as a tube of anti-corrosive thread compound similar to Duralac or Lanacote, and a Teflon spray for the luff tape. Finally, it's also a good idea to have a supply of rags for cleanup. Unfurl the sail and drop on deck and then tie the sail back along the lifeline. Remove the shackles from the tack and the head. Unspool the furling retrieval line. Remember to rewind the furling line prior to raising the sail. Support the extrusions by tying the jib halyard around the sail feeder. This will prevent the foils from dropping down on the swedge stud when the clamp and the set pin are removed. Ease the backstay, and if your boat is so equipped, ease the aft lowers. As the headstay will need to be removed from the stem head, the mast must be secured by tying off the spinnaker halyard, spare, jib halyard, and topping lift to the bow mooring cleats or other secure fittings. Tension these halyards to provide some slack in the headstay. Remove the stainless steel drum plates. Be sure to tie off the two halves to a piece of line to prevent loss overboard. These parts are a match set and the fasteners are captive. Remove the two fasteners in the top and bottom plates. Be sure to pass a small piece of line through the holes in both halves of the plates to prevent loss overboard. Be careful with these fasteners as they are not captive.
Remove the four or five fasteners and the bearing that attach to the torque tube. Remove the four fasteners in the clamp and then remove the hammer pin from the front face of the torque tube. Slide the torque tube up to expose the turnbuckle. Remove the cotter pins and loosen the turnbuckle until the clevis pin can be removed from the head stay. Remove the mounting pin for the bearing from the link plate. Slide the old bearing pack down and off the head stay. Replace the old bearing pack with the new bearing pack. Assembly is the reverse of the disassembly. Be sure to use thread compound on all fasteners. Spray a dry Teflon spray on the luff tape of the sail as it is raised. We hope this video has been of help in understanding what is involved in replacing a lower bearing unit on one of our furlers. If you feel this project is more than you wish to take on, please let us know and we will attempt to put you in touch with a professional yacht rigger in your area that can get the job done correctly. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact our customer service department. We're all here to help.